Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I send you greetings whatever time of day it is that you are watching this video. My name is Barbara, and I wanted to share with you some thoughts on a lesson that I was reviewing for my Sunday school class. We are still in virtual Sunday school using the technology on Zoom to teach our Sunday schools and through YouTube also to learn more about the Lord since we're still a uh, social distancing during this time. But um, as I was reviewing the lesson, some of the scriptures spoke to me and I wanted to share uh, some of my thoughts on the scriptures with you. One of the first ones uh, that we were reviewing is we're uh, going through the book of First Peter. And in First Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 13, Peter says that, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. We definitely have to make sure that our minds are clear, that our minds are sober, that our minds are on guard to know that we know what God wants for us to do. We know what God's word is. God was so, uh, he was so good to us because he sent his word to us in the form of flesh. We know that his word was born of a virgin, um, uh, way back over 2,000 years ago, his word, Jesus Christ, walked this earth. He lived with us. He taught us. He gave us a perfect example of what the word means to us. And then the word showed his love for us when he got up so willingly because he loved us, because he loves his father, and because he's obedient. He got willingly up on the cross on the crucifix as a sacrifice for us. So the word is so good to us. Jesus, Jesus Christ is so good to us that we should be alert and we have to keep our eyes on him because he is the one who has came to save us. He is the one who has come and given us so much hope. In the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6, it says that, but Christ is faithful as the son over God's house and we are his house. If indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. We are the temples in which God has sent his Holy Spirit to live in. God has placed Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, within us to live in us as a temple we have to guard, we have to guard around. Isn't that something that God sent his son who's so precious to him to live in us? We have Jesus living on the inside of us. When we trust in God, when we trust trust in what he has done for us, we can hold steadfast to his promises. We can hold steadfast to the word that he's given us in the scriptures. And we can know that God is a God. We serve a God who will never lie. We serve a God who will never fail. We serve a God who loves us always. And he sent his son in which to give us salvation and to save us. But there's something that we have to do on our side. God has done his part, but there's some things that we have to do as well. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, Peter teaches us and he tells us that as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance we have to make sure that we don't conform to the world. We have to make sure that we are not blending in with the people that are around us, with the activities that are around us, going to see things, listen to the listen to uh, uh, music, or even engaging in conversations around us that are not and would not be pleasing to Jesus Christ. 
In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, we are taught that we are not to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I need to make sure that I am allowing God to transform my mind. I need to make sure that I am living in harmony with the will of Christ Jesus. That is something that I have to do. God, like I've said, God has done his part. What part now am I doing? And am I allowing Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit, at the direction of the Father God, am I allowing him to transform my mind, my thoughts, my walk, and my talk to his perfect and everlasting will? Have any of you ever heard the saying as believers that are we being a thermostat or are we being a thermometer? So we all know that a thermometer, it takes the temperature of the surroundings. It takes the temperature of the environment. A thermometer, it echoes and it reflects on what is around it, on what it is surrounded by. But if we want to be a thermostat, that Christian. Uh, we are the ones who are to change the environment. We are the ones who are not affected by what is too hot or by what is too cold. We are the ones who are not affected by the criticism, by the gossip, by whatever is going around us. We are the ones who are going to show that instead of being transformed or being taken in by the environment, we are going to display the fruit of the Spirit, which is the fruit of God's Spirit, which is the fruit of Christ's Spirit. We are going to show love. We are going to show joy. We are going to be patient. We are going to be kind. We are going to be faithful. We are going to show self-discipline. We are going to change the environment around us so that people can see us and people can see the Christ that is in us and be changed by what we are being changed by, which is the Holy Spirit of God. The scriptures and God teaches so much in the Bible. In Ephesians uh, 4, chapter 4, verses 22 through 24, the scriptures say that you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And when I read these scriptures, I have to do a self-examination of myself. I have to look at myself and ask some questions. Am I doing all of that that the scriptures are telling me? Is that my life and is that my lifestyle? Do I allow God to regulate my thoughts? Do I allow God to regulate my mind and my activities? Do I walk? Do I talk and do I act like I'm striving to live more and to be more like Christ? Am I acting like I want to and that I desire to live more in his righteousness? I know that when I look at myself, I have to humbly go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. And Lord, help increase my desire to be more like you. Lord, I humbly ask you as a servant, as a disciple, as a follower, and as a believer in your son, Jesus Christ, let me be conformed to your will. Let me be conformed to your word. Let me 
want to desire to be more like Christ Jesus. I want to live a life that other people can see and say there is something different about her. And then they come and say, what is it different? What is it that makes you think this way? What is it that makes you smile despite of what's going on with you? What is it about you that, that causes you to continue to have such a positive attitude? attitude. And Lord, let me be able to have the courage and the boldness to say, you know what? It is not me. There is nothing in my own strength that can make me continue to go throughout this world. It is all about God and the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, that he's given me. And I thank him for it. And I can't help but to show the joy that Christ gave me. I can't help to show the love that God has given me. And I just want to share that love with you and to share the word of the gospel. That is what I have that I need to pray for God. Let me continue to desire and thirst after your word, after your son, after your will for your righteousness. And I'm going to continue to pray for that to be an addition to my life so that it can be an addition to all of those who are around me. I just want to take this moment to say thank you to everyone for listening to my thoughts on this. I hope that it has added some type of meaning uh, or even some introspection to your thoughts and your lives. If you like this video, don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, just uh, leave me some positive words. <laughs> I hope at the bottom in the in the comment section or you can tag me on Instagram. I have an Instagram page. Tag me on that and let me know what your thoughts are. What do you think about how we can continue to strive for the hope that Christ Jesus gives us? Uh, let me know what you're thinking. Again, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend some moments with me and I pray that your day is... Um, is filled with love, joy, and blessings. And until the next time that we meet again, you all take care, stay safe, and know that I love you. Many blessings. Bye-bye.